Thank you very much. Um, I'm, well, it's always a little difficult when you're one of the last to speak, when a lot of the things that you've, um, that you've experienced have been said. So I'm not going to spend too much time, but I'm just going to go through some of our, our challenges and um, discuss them. But I'll run through the ones that are similar. I think, first of all, when um, COVID happened in February, um, our first case was in, on the 27th of February, but we didn't shut down till March 30th. Um, and we really didn't know that there'll be a lockdown. Um, it, it, it was not, we didn't think that would come so quickly. Um, and it threw our academic calendar off course. Um, though previously we had been working to migrate many of our courses online, we certainly were not ready when this happened. We had some um, areas like the Distance Learning Institute and some other um, programs that had the ability to go to, to become fully online. Our distance learning was a hybrid program early before, and they went totally online, and it was an easy move for them. Um, some of our more um, our executive programs went online, but the undergraduate programs were much more difficult for us to do. And the challenges we faced were, like everybody had said, quite a number of the teachers had to learn digital skills and learn to navigate online platforms. And there was some resistance, especially amongst the older lecturers who really found it tough. The younger lecturers, it was very easy. The other challenge which a lot of people had said was the, the isolation. Um, most of us, when we're lecturing, we're taking cues and feedback from students, you know, from the environment. And suddenly speaking into this empty computer was, uh, was a major challenge. So you never quite knew how your lectures were going on. Um, the third one was in how to turn our lectures, because our, uh, our lecture programs were very lecture heavy, um, to turn these into interactive online um, lectures was really difficult and it's still difficult and we're still working through it. One of the other challenges we had, uh, we have is epileptic electricity. Um, it's one thing to have internet access, it's one thing to have power all the time. Now the university itself has all the backup generators but now that the students had gone home, there's some of them living in places where there's no electricity. So um, access to electricity is a major problem. So it was very clear that in working with going online and students outside the university, it was going to be, um, it, like Rwanda said, many students would not be captured at all in, in this. Um, internet access was another problem, but not only just the access, Access, but the bandwidth. So some of them, yes, there is access, but um, the, the, the speech comes gobbled throughout. And we're still working through this. But even for where there were some students who had access to the internet, um, it was hard for, for the, one of the things the teachers had said was about remote assessment. How do you know it's a student that's taking the assessment? I mean, and this we haven't sorted out yet. It's going to be more technology. But in the meantime, what the university has been doing mainly, because really, I, I would love to say that we have sorted out the problem and we're doing really well. We're not, I don't think we're doing, we're not doing very well yet, but we're improving every day, is to improve our, um, uh, our online courses, um, teaching the lecturers to improve how to get their courses online, um, to have more interactive courses. Um, one area that was particularly stellar is the library. We had, uh, because books are difficult to get here, we had developed our online library a lot better than we had books. Buying books from you know, all over the world and having all these subscriptions, it's an extremely expensive thing. So it was easier to do online. So one of the things the librarian did early was to share 
and want to get even more, um, some of them free, and share all these links with everybody so that you could access um, library facilities. And um, the library access was online, and to get people to easily access this. So the library was not a problem for us at all. Um, one of the questions asked was, um, what did we learn about distance learning? Uh, I think prior to this, we thought it was easy, but we found it's a lot harder than it looks. It takes a lot more time to, to get your um, lectures together. Time becomes a blur. Everybody, like the last speaker said, it's as though everybody thinks that because you're at home or you're out, you, you, can, you, you, you have nothing else to do but to be on the internet. And so many people are cross-eyed. Just uh, one statement I hear, I'm zoomed out. You know, we're constantly online. The other part of it, from our point of view, a lot of our universities are government-funded. Um, there's a lot of... Um, uh, um, a lot of the work, uh, a, lot of, a lot of the students are is, is subsidized. And with COVID and the problems with businesses and so on, funding became a lot more difficult. Now, um, and we found that, I mean, for us to do online properly, then you need to have a lot of cash flow. And that was, that's not something that we have a lot of. However, we got, we got, um, creative and one of the things we learned was that one of the things that COVID did was everybody started looking inwards and we found that private organizations were ready to work with us to improve our online um, facilities and in this period we've actually had donors who have brought in um, huge uh, who have set up classes where you can have um, E, um, that we can connect to anywhere in the world, which was something that we may not have had if there had not been a COVID. Um, suddenly we had um, people wanting to assist to make sure that uh, um, internet access was improved. But we still have challenges because students are in various parts of the country with various uh, access to internet. Um, the gap between what kind of teaching materials are provided, we don't provide um, um, the materials. When people were on campus, we had sort of like large internet cafes where students could come in and log in. Um, and, um, but that is not, uh -oh. um, but um, which at the time we had the major lock lockdown, there was no access for students to do that. And even now, there's, you can't travel between one city and another. So students who are not available don't have that access. So it's still very, very challenging for us to do. Um, but um, for some of the uh, courses that were online, um, one other thing that came up, apart from having WhatsApp groups and so on, was the issue of e-tutors. Um, in this was... Um, one of our programs, they have, in addition to the lecturers, they had younger lecturers who worked like tutors that the students could talk with. So after the lecture, you now had these um, chat rooms where the e-tutor could talk through their problems and so on. And the students, because the age difference was not too much. So almost like a course advisor online. Um, it's not been all doom and gloom, um, but I would say we're still struggling to get fully online and there's still a lot of work to do. Um, the other area we have a lot of challenges with are the courses that require skills um, like medicine and dentistry. Um, you can teach those virtually. How do you, there's a lot of um, working with patients and doing things and the students are not in the university. So there's been a lot. I remember I was talking with one of my colleagues in dentistry and they were, they've been, they've been looking at how they can do, bring the students back in at least to finish off some of their courses because you can't teach dentistry online. It, it just has to be face to face. So we still have issues with um, a lot of these. And what I'll say for what COVID has certainly done for us is disrupted our academic calendar.
But it's also been an opportunity. As I said, we were working through going, bringing a lot of our classes online and having more, a more hybrid and blended um, educational system. But what this did was accelerated the process. So we've increased our bandwidth in the campus. We have more classes that are digitally enabled. But more importantly, we now have access to lecturers abroad, which means we can have, I call it the democratization of um, education in a way. We now have access to international faculty. We, we don't have to bring them in. Um, so we're beginning to leverage a lot of our, um, our colleagues that are abroad who we have MOUs with so that they can give lectures. Uh, we're also talking with um, a lot of Nigerians in university abroad in, um, in diaspora to give lectures from their universities and so, that, so, that, so that the experience will be richer. Um, so I, would, I wouldn't want to repeat what everybody is saying. Oh, the other thing we've done um, is to share with students um, online courses that are not necessarily by us, but are available, MOOCs and so on, that they can access on their own. Um, because really, we do have a disrupted calendar, and I'm sure that we're going to have, um, and you know, it, um, we're going to have to catch up uh, by losing some of the holidays in the in the year to come. So um, I would say COVID nineteen has been um, a big challenge, but it's also opened up a lot of opportunities. Um, we're accelerating our, our, our online programs. We've accelerated pedagogy, and certainly uh, all the lecturers who might who had been very resistant to online realize that that's the way we're going. So everybody is working to improve their um, digital access. There's a lot of work that we're having to do, but I think by and large, it's at the end of all this we would have accelerated. And we would have we would we would come out positive than negative. Um, we've had a lot more interest by the um, business world in improving our online facilities in a way that they were not doing before. And because um, COVID locked us all in, there's been a lot of innovation, and it's just been amazing. So um, we there's still a lot of work for us to do. And one of the things I've taken away from here is some of the things people have come up with but um, we continue to look for new ways of engaging the students but our major challenge is still how do students access our facilities where there's no internet